Right, but the top of the news everywhere is this new strain of COVID, uh, the Omicron, 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 which I get is I guess is a, a, a Greek alphabet letter or something like that, Latin something. Um, anyway, uh, this is a this is the new variant of COVID coming out of South Africa. Uh, South Africa seeing a, a significant spike in COVID after uh, months of, of pretty stable numbers. Uh, the spike is attributed to this new uh, uh, variant of COVID. Uh, the variant has already escaped Africa. Its uh, significant numbers have already been, um, UK I think has two or three, and rest of Europe, and there's strong suspicious in, in likelihood that it's already in the United States. It's, all, it's already spread all over the world, but what do governments do? What do governments do? What are the idiots in power and those who advise them do, because, because it, it makes them look like they're doing something. Trump did this in March of last year. Uh, Biden is doing it now. The Brits, the, 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 the Europeans are all doing it. Shut down the borders. Too late, guys. Virus is already here. Virus is already spreading locally. Who the hell? Just stop running our lives. Stop dictating what we can and cannot do. I'm upset. Because the Brits have now decided that um, in order to come into the UK, you are going to have to go into isolation. No matter whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, you go into isolation, then get a PCR test. And only when you get the negative test uh, results in the PCR test can you go out of isolation. You know, given the, now the demand for PCR tests, who knows how long that will be. That basically destroys all my plans, which I had um, uh, for travel, uh, I just bought tickets to go to the UK in January to, uh, uh, as part of a European tour. It's just so, you know, they have no respect for our lives, no respect for our liberty, no respect for our freedom, no respect for our ability to make choices for ourselves. Anyway, uh, uh, the virus, this new variant is already spreading around the world. It, it looks like it's very, very uh, contagious. It's spinning fast. Uh, there was a plane that came in from South Africa into the Netherlands that I, I was reading an article that said 61, 61 of the people on the plane tested positive for this new variant, which is bizarre to get those kind of numbers. They didn't get it on the plane. They got it before they got it on the plane. But to get it in those numbers means that it's, it's pretty prevalent in South Africa itself. Um, so uh, the numbers are very high. Can't go to Africa because Biden has banned all travel to Africa. So again, our commanders in chief, our, our uh, the people who command our lives, are dictating where we can and cannot go and how we can and cannot where, how, what. Anyway, um, so uh, it's time we adopted a new metric. Number case numbers are not important. Indeed, COVID is endemic. We're probably all going to get it at some point. The only thing that's important is how many people die from this and what are the demographics of those who die from it. And maybe, uh, you know, is it overwhelming the hospital system? That's it. The only thing that matters is, you know, how many people are going to ICU and how many people are dying. Case numbers are insignificant. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares how many people get a disease. The question is, it's how deadly is this disease? Now, usually with viruses, as they mutate, they become more transmittable and less potent, less deadly. Particular... If you're vaccinated, that becomes, that makes you less deadly. You know, the, the vaccine, even for a mutated virus, is probably going to make it less harmful to you. And at some point, we're just going to have to let it go. We should have, you know, you, you could argue, done this already. The only, remember the lockdowns in March of last year? Flatten the curve for the hospitals. Not 
to achieve zero cases. That should have, could have never been the goal. But politicians have tasted what it power feels like, conservative, leftists, status politicians feel what power is like, whether it's the conservative Johnson, whether it's Orban in Hungary, whether it's the Germans, the French, no matter where it is. And of course, Biden in the United States, they feel what power is like and they won't let it go. They won't let it go. And of course, they're afraid. They're afraid. You know, it's easy to perceive politicians as these power lusting, ooh, scheming evil guys. But really, much of what motivates politicians is fear. What if it gets out of control? I might lose the next election. What if I'm perceived as weak? What if I'm perceived as non-scientific? What if I'm perceived? Politicians are motivated by fear and, and fear of the electorate and fear of how people look at them and fear of what the intelligentsia of what their crowd will think of them and they panic. So we will, uh, we will see what happens with all of this, um, but it, it, it looks bad in terms of the government's responses. It looks uh, like the government responses uh, to this are pretty uniform across the, across, uh, the globe. So uh, it's not the case that this is just a phenomena of the Biden administration, but it looks like this um, this kind of crazy, res this kind of uh, response, lockdown response, reduced liberty, reduced freedom, shut down airports, don't allow people to travel, tell them where they can and cannot go, isolate them, put them, whether they test positive or negative, doesn't matter, get them. That kind of mentality is just gonna, is just gonna continue on and on and on. And look, it could be that this variant is more deadly, uh, but from what I'm reading out of South Africa, it doesn't seem that that's the case. The South African health authorities are claiming that it's less deadly, less likely to get you in hospital, particularly if you're vaccinated, but it is very contagious. So let's get it over with. I just heard today from a friend of mine who um, also hires me to give talks. Um, you know, so I, I was with her and um, at an event, what was it? Um, a week and a, a day ago in, in, in Colorado and no, in Connecticut, in Connecticut, basically a week ago, uh, uh, la, uh, last Friday, not uh, last Friday. And, um, it turns out that a number of people at that event got COVID. She is, she has gotten COVID. She spent uh, Thanksgiving kind of in isolation, struggling with COVID. She's, I think she's doing fine. She's vaccinated. I think she's fine. Um, uh, one of the other speakers at the event, also got COVID. Uh, he too, uh, I saw on Facebook. He's he's vaccinated, but you know it's 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 a little scary, particularly once you get to a certain age. And he's got COVID. Anyway, um, I still don't have it. Now I'm not eager to get it. It's not like I'm eager to get it, but it's, I do find it interesting that I have been traveling throughout. I was traveling in February, March, uh, you know, on airplanes all over the all over the place without many precautions. I was traveling throughout uh, last year, 2020. I was traveling all of this year. My wife had COVID, and I spent an entire week, ten days, where she had symptoms, and I was with her nonstop, and I didn't get it. Um, I just, you know, I've been lecturing unmasked and where the audience is unmasked for months and months and months. And I'm not encouraging anybody else to do this. I'm just, this is just what I've done. And I was at this event a week ago where a bunch of people have got COVID and I didn't get COVID. So I, I, I'm happy. I'm lucky. Uh, whatever it is, I am, I, I have not been able to get COVID and I hope that uh, continues. But the reality is, the reality is uh, that we're probably all going to get it. I mean, deer in Michigan, the, the entire, you know, significant percentage of the population uh, of deer in Michigan have COVID, and it's likely that human beings will get it back from deer, and this is like endemic, and this is just going to continue, and we'll, 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 to some extent, at some point, we're all going to get it. 
the tragedy is that nobody seems uh, to be learning lessons from this and, uh, and, and improving policy prescriptions for it. The, the, the response is just this fearful and, and uh, as it has always, uh, always been, right? It's, it's just as fearful. Uh, Wonder Freeman says, Iran has Japanese genes immune to COVID. I, it might be that I've, I've been traveling so much for so many years that I, my immune system is well developed or, you know, uh, 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 I've, I've got so many COVID colds that, uh, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? And it could be I just got lucky, right? I, the fact is, the reality is that the most likely answer is Iran is just lucky. Uh, don't underestimate the, 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 the role luck, luck in the sense of, um, uh, you know, actually having a, a low probability event and surviving a low probability event. All right. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to get everybody up to speed. Uh, this is spreading like crazy. Uh, everybody's going to be talking about this, this new variant of COVID. It, it's going to be everywhere. Uh, locking down borders is not going to help. Uh, let's hope and fight for a non-lockdown solution in the United States, even if cases accelerate and increase significantly. Uh, let's hope that the response this time is more rational. Uh, I would encourage people who are 65 and older or might have comorbidities to get their booster shot. This would be a good time or maybe wait a few weeks until we know more about this particular variant and maybe the booster shots could be modified to cover this variant. But this is a great time to consider uh, getting vaccinated and, and getting, getting your vaccines all uh, caught up so that um, if you have comorbidities, if you're susceptible to COVID and, and susceptible to bad outcomes from COVID, uh, you reduce the odds of those bad, uh, of those bad, um, bad outcomes. So uh, I've still not gotten my booster. I don't expect to get a booster until... Uh, I know more about this new variant and whether the boosters are going to be modified or not. All right. Um, I, oh, one last thing I would say is, where's the outrage that the FDA has not approved the Pfizer and Merck pills that are supposed to reduce basically the risk of death from COVID to zero? Um, where are these pills? If these pills were circulating then it wouldn't matter. None of this would matter. It would all be over. So maybe the political class has an incentive not for this not to be over because this is, they're benefiting enormously in terms of the power grab from this, but approve the frigging pills so that we can stop worrying about this. $700 course of the Pfizer, the Merck um, uh, pill, and you're almost guaranteed not to have a significantly negative effect from COVID. I would take the pills like that. I have no qualms about taking the pill, even if they're only approved for emergency use or whatever the hell they, they call it. So get, get the pills out there. All right. Um, no, I'm not using ivermectin. I explained why yesterday. Chances that ivermectin actually works in COVID are very, very low and is just absolutely no reason to be using them. The fact is that if I get COVID, chances of me having a really bad outcome, a very, very, very low. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and uh, ivermectin is certainly not the first thing I would jump out to. Other uh, drugs, there's this one antidepressant that taken in small doses has shown significant positive uh, results with COVID, much better results than ivermectin in much better studies. Uh, so if you're going to get COVID and you're going to take something, be scientific about it and not political and not jump to whatever the latest fad among the doctors that, 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 are, that are cool happen to say. Yes, flux, fluvoxamon, fluvoxamon, that's it. Some, yeah, that's the, that's the antidepressant. It's a, it's, a, it's a mild antidepressant. You can take it in low doses and it is proven of all the different, and it's very cheap, it's all the different drugs that have been tried that are very cheap, that are approved already, that have no side effects, that are easy to use, that have no issues. Flu, fluvoxamine, fluvoxamine, it has produced 
as far as I can tell, I'm not a doctor, don't take my word for this, as far as I can tell, has produced the best results. Um, so, uh, and, and, and if you take it in the right dose and low doses, it won't have an effect on your, on your mind. And, it, and you can go on and off it easily. So again, this is the one that um, Scott Alexander and I've read others uh, have said it has the best large uh, a peer-reviewed uh, statistically significant study out there, much, much better, uh, much, much more informative than, uh, than uh, ivermectin. So if I, ha if I was going to take something, I would take that. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.